Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Balance Theory Podcast. I'm your host, Erica, and today we are doing a proactive check-in on our goals. I know it's only February, but we don't want to get to June, reflect then and realize we could have made some fine-tuned tweaks early on in the year to ensure our trajectory was smooth, straight and on track. So today I'm going to hold you accountable. We're going to uncover your drivers under your goals and make sure that what you actually set for yourself in January is something that you still want and put you back on track if you've fallen off, push you onto the track if you haven't started or map out that track if you're already on it to make sure that this is the year you really smash and achieve your goals. I remember speaking about this last year. There's this thing towards the end of January called World Quitters Day where people get so fired up and motivated at the beginning of January, they set their goals. And then by the time it's like the third week of January, they've already kind of forgotten or pushed aside their goals. It's almost like this set and forget mentality. It's called World Quitters Day. And I hope that none of you have fallen into this category, but for those of you that feel you might have, and you need a little bit of a push, or you just want to make sure that you're on the right track, then this episode is going to be perfect for you. So I want to break down three key ingredients, which I've learned from the Mind Valley course. So a lot of you would have heard about Mind Valley. If you haven't Googled them, they also have a podcast. It's it's a great business which teaches a range of things. But the program I'm doing at the moment is all about tapping into different frequencies of your brain to help you manifest what you want and just connect with aligned action and a whole range of things. One of the things that Vision, who is the, I guess, host, the brains behind it, goes into is this three-step ingredient to manifesting. But today I want to utilize that framework, but talk about it in terms of materializing our goals, which I guess is one and the same, but that might resonate with some of you a little bit more than the concept of manifesting. So what I'm going to do is use this three-step framework as a way to work out or check yourself, I suppose, that your goals are aligned with what you really and truly want. The reason being, sometimes it's not your lack of drive or motivation that is the reason you haven't started your goals. Sometimes it's that it's just not aligned for you. So you've set something in January when you're all motivated. Maybe you've listened to external noise on what you should achieve or what you think you should achieve, as opposed to really tuning in and working out what's aligned for you. And that could be the reason that you are yet to take any action towards your goals. So I want to unpack this together. Um, And it's also a really good exercise if you're already making movement towards your goals to just check in with yourself and make sure that you're on the right track. So by now we will have had a little bit of time from when you set your goals. And so that initial pump, that drive, that overly positive kind of attitude tends to dwindle down a bit, which is absolutely normal. But what it does is it gives us a little bit of perspective. It gives us time to reflect And now we can look back and think, okay, I'm going to now reassess my goals with a fresh mind, with a little bit of time into 2023 and just see how I feel about them. So the first ingredient for, I guess, manifesting and mind you, these these form part of a technique he uses called the three scenes technique, which I won't go into today, but is a really cool uh, visualization technique. So the first step is this idea of desire in the context of our goal. It means if you've set yourself something that you want to achieve. Do you have a burning desire and really, really want that thing? So this, I guess, asks you to really connect with your why. Now the why times five exercise is something that's not new. It's something I've spoken about a lot on the podcast, but it's basically this idea where you express what you want. So let's say the goal is to get a promotion, right? Your desire might be to, let's express it simply, get promoted. But if we use the why times five exercise, we're going to get to the core of that burning desire. Often when we express it off the cusp, especially like even when we write our goals, it's this surface level idea that is at the top of something much deeper. And connecting with that thing that's much deeper often is a way for us to stay like connected to the goal in a very authentic way. So let's do this together. Let's say one of your goals is to get a promotion. I'm going to ask you why that is. Hypothetically, your why to why I want to get a promotion is because I want more money. All right. Well, why do you want more money? 
because I want to be able to put a deposit on a house or pay for my wedding next year, let's say. Let's go with a house, put a deposit on a house. And why do you want to put a deposit on a house? Because I want to live in my own space and move out with my family, my husband, my kids, whatever it is. Why do you want to do that? Because I want a home in a space that's private and just for us. You know, and you keep drilling down until you get to the core of the why. So you get to a point where you're like, okay, I have a goal of getting a promotion, but the desire, the burning desire that goes a part of that goal is because I eventually want to have my own space and my own home with my own kids in it. For example, you know, I mean, other goals may end up leading you down to a point where you just want to have a sense of fulfillment or you, you know, want to feel more confident to empower others. You want to really drill down till you get to that authentic why and that is your burning desire that's your driving force so often the gap between us taking action towards our goals is we haven't actually connected with this burning desire we don't have that driving motivation because we just see it as I'm going to get a promotion and what that does sometimes is it puts the onus on the external world to do the work for you to make things come together for you but if you connect with that driving burning desire which you should be able to, by the way, if it's a genuine and aligned goal for you, you should get to a point where you're like, hmm, this is a genuine reason why I want this thing. That's going to be something that you're reminded of constantly as you're working towards that goal. When you have shit days, when you have hard days that make that goal feel really far or feel really challenging, you're going to be reminded of that burning desire. Another note on this, as I just said, you may find you can't actually get to the core. You can't ask yourself why. You can't find that genuine burning desire. I experienced this myself. I had one goal in particular that I wrote down this year. So what I what I did basically is I wrote down all my goals and then I did this exercise for each of them. When I tried to get to the core of why I had this goal, it was purely for external validation. It was purely because I thought that that's what would make me feel successful in the eyes of everybody else. I couldn't find an anchor within myself that was a genuine alignment. And so you know what I did? I actually took that goal off my list. And simply by engaging in this, you'll be able to quickly identify which goals are genuinely aligned for you and which goals are not. And I think that's really important in the context of understanding why we may have taken action towards our goals, why we might be hesitating, or why we may have taken action and feel a little bit disconnected from it. So try this out and let me know how you go. But I I feel this is a really useful tool and a very key ingredient to drilling down to the why and connecting with our goals on much, much deeper level than just surface. Under this concept of desire, another thing to think about is this concept of wanting versus immature wanting, something I also learned from my valley. Immature wanting is wanting something or desiring something based on what the world or people around you are telling you that you need. So for example, if buying a house is something that stresses you out, but you feel like that's kind of the natural progression of living in a city and and what your family's told you to do, etc. But you would rather live out of a suitcase and travel the world. By you having that goal of buying a house, that's immature wanting. That's wanting based off what other people tell you is right for you, what other people have said or deemed to be successful. True wanting, true desire connects with what you actually want for yourself. And don't be afraid if this goes against the status quo. You want to be able to identify the things that you want. This is your life. So far as we know, we only get one of it. And you want to maximize the time you've got. Most of you listening are in your 20s and 30s. This is our time to work it out to try new things. And if you play into that immature wanting, if you play into what other people tell you you should achieve or obtain in your life, you're forever going to be ignoring that true desire within you. And you lose nothing from entertaining or trying something out. You can always come back to the safe option to, you know, this immature wanting if that's what you choose, if that's actually what you decide that you want. And of course, I'm not saying that just because most of society does something, it's not right uh, or it's not for you, but just making that distinction of, is it something I genuinely want or is it only something I want because that's what I've been told to do is really important in assessing this desire. So just something to have a little think about. Now we're going to move a little bit more into the manifesting side, I suppose. So let's say you've, you've done this first step. 
you've assessed the desire, you feel like it's genuine and it's aligned for you. Uh, maybe you've probably even started to take action towards it. That's all great. Now we get on to the accountability piece and the last two ingredients are really in the realm of manifestation. So say you've been trying to create all these opportunities for yourself. You feel like nothing's really happening. You've, you're making and taking all these steps, uh, but you can't see the progress. These next two steps are going to be really key for you. So you've connected with that desire. That's step one. Step two comes down to this idea of your belief. Often when we set ourselves goals, now if you'd set them with us at the start of the year, we started off with our dreams. We started thinking big without limitation. The flip of that sometimes is that we set ourselves these targets, but there's something inside of us and we don't actually believe that we can achieve it. And in turn, we may be blocking ourselves from achieving that thing. Now, this is energetically speaking, of course, but I mean, think about it logically. If you're trying to be promoted, but you don't believe that that's within the field of possibility around you, or you don't believe you're good enough to actually do that thing, irrespective of how many opportunities you create, of how hard you work, that could be an element of you actually blocking yourself because energetically you're putting out there that it's not going to happen. So a big part of identifying that genuine desire is believing that it can actually happen as well believing that you can get that promotion because you believe that you can get that house and that space for yourself and your family and your own four walls, for example. The last piece to this is expectancy, which I really love because it taps on the idea of surrender, which is something I find quite difficult to just kind of let go and accept that things are going to work out to do everything I can do and let go of the outcome. But this piece or this last step asks you to be so confident in your desire and belief that it can happen that you just expect and accept that it will happen. There's no ifs or buts about it. It's it's a question of you desire this thing, you believe it can happen. Of course, you're taking all the necessary steps to get there, but then you just expect that it's going to happen. Now, when it comes to manifesting, I think this is a really important part of unblocking anything, any hurdles that you may have set for yourself. It's the way I describe it or connect with it is it's like this inner knowing that it's going to happen. So if you feel you're tripping up or getting stuck at the belief or expectancy part, rewind and listen to this again and just have a think about why it might be that you don't believe it's possible. Because I think once you have a burning genuine desire and then you believe it's possible, the expectancy part is easy. And it's not that you act like it's already happened. I mean, that might work for some people. For me, it's more this inner knowing that it's on the way. So then you're not questioning, you know, why things haven't happened at a certain time. So you might be in a position where you started to take steps towards your goals and you feel like the universe isn't giving you anything back. But if you have the desire and the belief down pat, you know and trust that it will happen when it's supposed to happen. And so that expectancy piece just might be a little mindset shift you need to keep going in your steps. Don't give up because you haven't received that feedback yet because you just know and expect that it's going to happen. But I think all of this really comes down to the desire, having that genuine desire. Then you can work on the belief, believing that what you're trying to achieve, that your goal can actually happen. And once you have those two down pat, you need to just start acting like you're expecting it. You're expecting it to happen any moment in time when it's supposed to happen. And I think these three combined really help us enjoy the process. I mean, when it comes to goals, we can get so caught up on that end result, right? We're just waiting for that single thing to happen, that we're not present in everything that it takes to get there, which is 99% of the journey of achieving a goal. So I think for you listening, you've set yourself goals, whether you've started to take action, whether you're holding off taking action, whether you're already deep into your 10 step plan to get to your goal. I think revisiting these three things, your desire, belief, and expectancy is a sure way to strengthen your connection with your goal and keep you on track and accountable as you progress towards it. One thing I want to share, and it's on the note of patience, something I personally struggle with. I'm one of those people that's like, okay, like I'm ready. I've got all the energy. If you just tell me what to do, like I'll do it. I'll get it done. I'll make it happen. But the universe doesn't always work like that. Sometimes it gives you things not when you want them, but when you're ready for them. And I reflect back and think, about situations where I wish that happened sooner, but had they happened, maybe I wouldn't have been mentally ready or maybe I wouldn't have 
been energetically receptive to it. So many different things, right? You, you can never wish that things have changed because you would never be where you are today. But often when we're working towards things, being patient is a very hard thing. We just, we can't understand and we get so frustrated why we're putting out all this stuff and we're getting nothing back. I've been there so many times and I call myself out every time thinking it's going to get easier. But I heard this one thing not that long ago, actually, and it was the first thing that really stood out to me when it came to this idea of patience. And it was this concept of having a time lag between you putting something out there that you want, so setting a goal or manifesting and it actually happening. It was this idea that if there wasn't a time lag, the universe wouldn't be able to give you what you genuinely want. So think about how many times you can change your mind or direction or the essence and flavor of what you want. If there was no time lag, if you could put something out there and it would happen straight away, the universe would constantly be bouncing with what you want. Just think about how many times you change your mind, right? If there wasn't that time lag, we wouldn't have time to refine and connect with what it is that we really want. So if you're someone listening right now who feels like you've shown all your cards to the universe and you're just waiting for some feedback, just trust that time lag is necessary for you to refine what it is you want and for the right thing to come back to you as opposed to the first thing that you've desired. That one's been really key for me to work through patience or find some patience, I should say. But all of these have been game changing uh, for my connection with my goals and just genuinely making sure that they're right for me and that I think that they can actually happen so that I'm not standing in my own way because I think the only limitations we have are those that we place on ourselves. And so working through these using this framework is such a great way to find that anchor, find that connection and keep us on track in this state of knowing that everything's going to happen. It just keeps us focused, cool, calm, collected and patient as we're working through and you know different challenges and hurdles might come up but we know where we're heading we know that's what we want it's a genuine desire and it's only a matter of time so i hope this has helped you either refine maybe a goal you've set for yourself that potentially isn't something you actually want it's helped you connect with a goal that you've been struggling to find a why with or motivation with and now you have that to kickstart you and, and keep going or It's just strengthened a goal that you've already been deeply connected with and working towards and really helped you with that patience piece of continuing to do the work, even if you're not getting that feedback yet and trusting that it will happen. Sending you all lots of love. I'll see you all on Monday for another guest episode. And please share this with someone who you feel also needs a bit of TLC with their goals. Maybe they're on track, maybe they're not. But I feel it has something really beautiful to offer to anyone at any stage of goal setting. Thank you again and until next time, stay balanced.